I sort of see New York as a port in a storm, I suppose, when I've come back from being in a faraway place. And I come back with a sense of confession always. I, I was in Gaza in 2009 during the Operation Kaspelad assault. And because I have a blue passport, there's no justice to it. I can leave. I can come right back to the security, to the expectation that I won't be bombed, that I won't be looking at buildings that are destroyed, that I won't be speaking with people who are so horribly traumatized by war. And yet I'm so much part of the whoop and the wharf and the fabric of a warlike culture. And I heard in the ensuing months and years from one particular young man from Gaza, his name is Anis, how hard it's been for him because he's so trapped, because he can't leave Gaza, because he can't at all rebuild his home, and because there are so many other people worse off than him. And sometimes I know the young man feels almost suicidal. So this time I came back from Afghanistan. Same thing. I get to come back to the security, to the comfort. I'll face a cold winter with heating and with warm clothing. But I was with people in an internal displaced persons camp. The man was so angry. He said, do you think we like to live this way? He hit the tent that was his shelter. And immediately the crumbling blanket turned to powder where he touched it. And they don't have enough food, and they don't have beverage, and they don't have security. But what they have are the memories of having to flee. Do you know what they call our drones? Tayari computer. And they say, Nevada. People who live on the other side of the world know where their threats are coming from. And somebody had gone behind their village in the Sanjin district of the Helmand province, who maybe had a rocket-propelled grenade, maybe was Taliban. They're not sure. They didn't know him. But their village was bombed. And then they introduced me to a man who couldn't take his eyes up from the ground. His pain was so strong, he'd lost his wife and his five children in that bombing. And where will they go? Kabul doesn't want them there. There's so many people in that situation. I went to the province of Bamyan, where things are relatively calm and safe, although they have no electricity and they're desperately poor. And there I met with the Afghan Youth for Peace volunteers, a brilliant set of days. And before I left, they were able to be part of a Skype phone call facilitated by the Fellowship of Reconciliation. They called Anis, the young man in Gaza. They listened to his story. They said, Anis, run when the bombs come. And he said, there's nowhere to run to. They said, come and stay with us in Afghanistan. He said, I can't leave. And then they began to unfold some of their stories. Let us be in solidarity with those who bear the brunt of our wars. Let us never be in solidarity with the war criminals, with the war profiteers, with those who fashion themselves as people who can live with the pain of war as though it were normal. Let us be guided by the privilege of being part of a country that was led and will be led if Malik is right. Listen to Imam Abdul Malik Mujahid. Let us be led by that man who said that we will practice a neighborliness that goes beyond town, city, race, tribe, creed, or nation state. And let us seek a way to build a better world every day between now and April 9th. We've got a lot of work to do.